Great. So our theme today, um, uh, visiting Ireland, the reason that we kind of picked this topic is we were dealing with the topic of a trip around Ireland because it's the theme of one of the new kind of small courses that we have on Bite Size Irish. So uh, would you like to tell us about that trip around Ireland? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So the trip around Ireland is our newest mini course and it's available to all membership plans at Bite Size Irish. And the idea was um, we took a step back the last few months, Ben, you were core part of these discussions and we we're trying to understand really more um, in a better, more clear way. Who are we helping? Who are the people who are trying to learn Irish? Why? What's their motivations? And the answer was always there in front of us, you know. Um, but it, it, it never sat right with me that it would only be beginners, intermediate, advanced, which is maybe the natural way to divide a language service. Because there's a lot of people who have a, a huge respect for the Irish language, for Gaelga. Um, but they don't necessarily want to study the language in itself, get into the grammar. And then, of course, there's these dedicated learners who love the language itself. They want to dive into the language and get chances to practice the Irish language. So um, our foundations plan is our cheapest membership plan at Bites as Irish. And it's made up of mini courses, which includes this trip around Ireland. So the idea is you can dip your toes into the culture of Ireland, but also be exposed to the Irish language through that. So Neil at Bites as Irish developed a trip around Ireland. And essentially, it's an online course to take at your own pace. And it's broken up into the four provinces of Ireland. So what you do is you go through each of the 32 counties and there's a recording, for example, for the Irish language name of the county. But then there's like topics of interest for each particular county. The things that really jump out, um, special places to see or special industries um, in that place. Like it starts with Port Larraga, uh, Waterford, and the industry, the crystal, the glass industry. So that's in there. Um, so you're going through this trip around Ireland and you're listening to how the counties are pronounced in the Irish language, which is good because if you are traveling around Ireland, you will see the names of the counties in the Irish language. Um, so that's a good thing already that you have at least a taste of how the counties are pronounced and you get the chance to pronounce it out aloud too, uh, to repeat aloud. And then the mini course finishes with this quiz um, to help you, uh, you know, learn those phrases or those names that you covered in the course. Um, so it's a nice way to expose yourself to the language without needing to study the language. And what we're doing is we're helping you get to know the Irish language where potentially you want to get into the language deeper through Explore or Grow memberships of Bites as Irish. But there is no pressure and plenty of people will stay at foundations and go through the mini courses we have there. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, for somebody who's going to Ireland from abroad, obviously they may be interested in language, but there are so many other aspects of the country separate to that not unrelated but you have the history the culture the sport different industries and traditions in different places um and those things are easier to access in a way um than the language itself so it's nice to be able to put the two things together um, and it's nice to give yourself just a little bit of structure as well in terms of as you go around i mean I know a lot about my own county and counties that I've lived in myself, but there were things in the course that I didn't know about counties that I haven't been to. I don't know if I've been, I think I may have been to one corner of Leitrim, possibly in a canoe from Sligo, oh. um, but I haven't been to Carlow, for instance. Um, you know, so there are things in there that I didn't know about as well. Um, so, yeah, you referenced the different types of courses and the different types of learners, and it's not always easy for somebody beginning to kind of know where they should start um, or what would suit them. So there is yeah. just a general 
um, page where people can go and look at what's available and try different things out for free and take quizzes and, and that sort of thing just to see if there's anything there that suits mm. their requirements. So that's bitesize.irish.links. And then um, the next mini course that's coming up, again, is one that's aimed at just giving people the basic tools um, to introduce themselves in Irish without having to get too deeply into the grammar or without having to learn loads of vocabulary or counting systems or or any of that. So when is that launching? That one's called Introduce Yourself in Irish. Yeah, that's the next mini course, which is planned to launch in August at least. And that'll be for all members of Bites as Irish. So okay. if you want to indeed join today, uh, you will get access to Introduce Yourself in Irish. And the idea is like, uh, um, people really want um, to, you know, share their love through and for the Irish language um, in a personal way. And uh, yeah, this this approach has always been in demand ever since Bite as Irish started. It was people looking to introduce uh, Owen Asanam Dum or Is Misha Owen. There's a couple of ways to say it. And we won't go into the depths of grammar for these but you're learning the, the essential phrases and i think it's very relevant for today isn't it because if someone's watching this and they do plan to visit ireland either this year or in the following year or indeed if they've been to ireland recently and they're thinking back that um essential phrases like that you know, they're nice to have at uh, those bits and it does take time i mean it's it, it does take the pressure off a bit to you, Ben. Like, um, mm -hmm. I've spoken to plenty of people who've come through Bite Size and they've wanted to be kind of fluent, you know, after a year. And my advice would definitely be like, well, that's a lofty goal and it's good to have goals to aim for, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'd still be warning that, like, you know, um, take it easy on yourself too. Um, if you're too destination focused with a challenge that's as hard as learning a language as an adult, you can quickly get kind of stuck and feel that the, the journey is just too much. And so then what do you do? You break it up into bite-sized bits and you have fun along the way. You enjoy the process. Yeah, what I find myself is if I go to another country, if I, it's one thing to know how to, well, it's one thing to know what something should sound like, but if you're not actually comfortable with saying it, if you haven't given yourself a little bit of opportunity to practice, then you feel reluctant to say it, or there may be um, one way to say it, which is the way the tourists say it. You may know that there's a more kind of idiomatic way of saying it, but if you're not comfortable that you've got it right, you're not going to do it. So it's good to give yourself that opportunity to practice just the basics and get comfortable with them so that you feel you can at least just say Konastansu or Kuramagut or whatever it happens to be, be comfortable with that much rather than feeling like you're only kind of halfway there or it's not quite right. So yeah, it is only the basics, but it's nice to be comfortable with them before you give it an attempt. <clears throat> Lovely. So thanks for telling us about that. Let's return to um, this month's topic, which is a trip around Ireland. We've had some questions in, in advance. So we may start, uh, this is one that you looked at, Owen. Um, and this is from Barra. So I'll just put this up on the screen. So Barra says, mm -hmm. as an Irish emigrant who's returning to Galway City from living abroad for the past six years or so, I was wondering what tips you all might have to get out there and learn it Irish properly. So what do you reckon on? <laughs> well, um, as I thought about this, um, Barra has a lot going for him. Um, so he, I, I presume, grew up in Ireland. I presume he had Irish at school. So that might be a lot more than a lot of people who are watching this already. Um, so uh, again, I, I'm kind of careful to say, if you're watching this, 
don't um, compare yourself too directly to that because you are at your own stage and if you didn't have the Irish language at school, that's not your fault. <laughs> so you start from where you are. Um, so Barra presumably had Irish at school and a lot of people, if they even live in Ireland and they're coming back to the Irish language, they feel like they're being pulled back into the Irish language and culture. There can be like a sense of regret for um, not learning more Irish at school earlier in life. What can you do? Um, another strong point here is Bara is here. Um, asking questions, connecting with us. So obviously, it's a real curiosity or motivation. And Ben, I'm sure you get that, um, say, with Bites as Bio sessions. People are really motivated, and it's motivation from the heart, um, learning the Irish language. So Barra has that going for him. And Galway City, um, it's not a great thought, um, but it's certainly somewhere where you get exposed to the Irish language more uh, than many of the cities in Ireland. Let's compare Limnach, Limerick, where I live, where I'm based normally. Um, Galway has a stronger uh, connection to the Irish language and there's the Gaeltacht, the vibrant Gaeltacht areas further west from Galway City. So uh, those are all the advantages, all the pluses. And um, so Barra's been away for six years and looking how to learn it properly. Yeah, I mean, um, Ben, you might have a different approach. What I'd say is have fun and maybe try to achieve great good gaff block. Our motto at Bites as Irish. How can you expose yourself to the Irish language in little bits uh, every day? Um, because if it's part of your everyday life, it's not something kind of alien. It's part of who you are and it becomes your identity. Um, so you're not just learning once a week. It's part of who you are. Um, so maybe that's not very actionable, Vara, but um, I would take a step back like that and just see um, all the pluses you have on your Irish language journey already. So, Ben, I don't know, would you want to add more to that or go on to the next? Well, I suppose on a practical level to add to that, um, Galway, there is plenty of Irish in Galway. The thing about Irish is it can be a little bit difficult to find, and we'll probably get on to that uh, later on. But you'll certainly find it in Orson Gael on Shaw Dominic on Dominic Street. So that's Conan Um So if you go to their website, they have, you know, Curacle Coro and various different activities taking place on a weekly basis. I'm sure if you want to do classroom classes, um, they'll have uh, classes at various different levels as well so that's a good place to start um there's a lot of traditional irish music in galway and where you have people playing and listening to traditional irish music you generally have irish speakers as well again you might not know it unless you engage with them but if you were to go to a place like the crane bar or if you're to go to ticoli um on shop street you, if you get chatting with people, some of them probably are interested in Irish and speak Irish, and you may hear people singing in Irish as well. Um, so that's another way to find people too. If you're associated with the university, there are plenty of associations. I can come and draw me mm -hmm. and um, come and crack was one that was there when I was in college. And it was simply about having crack Oscar. That's all there was to it. Uh, so that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of it around. You only have to go out the road and you're in Barna. You know, it, the Gaeltuchts get more Gaelic, let's say, the further west you go. Um, Nakhnakara, Knuckakarach is, I think, still officially a Gaeltucht, but you won't find that much there. But the further west you go, the more you'll find. Um, but the city, yeah, it has a fair bit of Irish in it as well. Yeah, so that would be, advice, be my advice um, in terms of goal. Thank you for actionable, actionable advice, Marvin. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, 
So uh, we'll have a look at the second question. So the second question is from Carol. And this is a this is a good one. So Carol says, in general, are Irish speakers in Ireland delighted or annoyed when random tourists try to speak to them in Irish? That's a very difficult question to to answer, Carol, because it doesn't happen a lot. This is the thing. It's very unusual <clears throat> for a random tourist to speak Irish to you. Um, because the context doesn't really arise. It's a funny thing. I worked for a few years, well, a couple of years as a student in a cafe in Galway City called Banana Fublucht, run by a Dutch man, um, Alex Hymans, who studied Celtic languages and became a, a writer and a journalist and a broadcaster over here. Um, and he set up this cafe where everybody on the team almost everybody on the team spoke Irish and at any given time there was always somebody who spoke fluent Irish working behind the counter and I never really randomly had a tourist come up and speak Irish to me even in that context where it was obvious that it was a possibility I did have Irish people who didn't normally speak Irish maybe speak Irish to me and that sort of thing um so I suppose the answer is if you have the good fortune to find somebody to identify somebody who's an Irish speaker and you speak Irish to them, then I think they'd be delighted. Um, they might initially be a little bit confused um, because they wouldn't be expecting it necessarily. And the other thing is they might find you difficult to understand depending on what your level of Irish is. Um, mm -hmm. And there may be issues with dialect as well. If you go to deepest, darkest, whatever Gaeltacht and you speak um, Irish then an older person may have a little bit of difficulty um, understanding you so initially they may draw a blank and you may have to try again um, but in terms of how they feel about it I think they would be delighted um, yeah don't know what you think about that Owen yeah and um, this might come up again um, in later questions like the person serving you even in the web depth might not even be Irish or might not have grown up in mm -hmm. Ireland. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen that. Um, there was um, Ferrum Kinshleva, um, where I used to uh, stay. It's a, it was a B and B along the Dingle Peninsula, and um, it, when we stopped for coffee the last time a year or two ago. Um, it wasn't an Irish person anyway. I don't don't remember which country they were from, but like they were there because they loved the area. Um, but they didn't speak Irish, as far as I know. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's like how yeah. can you do it without putting too much expectation on the person? Maybe. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I. There's a, a journalist from Dún Chín, um, Dóhí de Morga, who wrote an interesting article about um, Irish in Dingle Town um, and whether or not it, it was there, whether or not you could access it, because somebody had written a letter to the Cork Examiner saying, I was in Dingle, nobody would speak Irish to me. And Dóhí de Morga mm -hmm. pointed out that, you know, you could get up in the morning and you could do everything you need to do in Undangan, um, Oscailge, and he has a funny line in it where he says, even if I only drank half a pint um, in each pub where I can order Oscailge in Dingle, I wouldn't be sober on my way home. <laughs> but this is different because he's an Irish speaker. He knows where to go. Everybody knows that he's an Irish speaker. Do you see? So yeah. I can tell you, I could give you a list of businesses in Dingle where I know that, the, or Undangan, I should say, where I know that the proprietor speaks Irish but their staff may not necessarily speak Irish. So um, that's a difficult thing. And you will also have experiences like, you know, I know that there are supermarkets where I can go and speak Irish, but it depends on who's working behind the counter. But for instance, if I go to Ifiga Fwisht, the post office, I've had an experience where I can talk Irish to the person behind the counter. They will understand and talk English to me, and I will reply in Irish, and they will talk in English, and I will get my business done, and they will understand, but they're not talking Irish to me, despite yeah. the fact that they have a sign saying, it's Féidir Gael and Lárach and so, whatever it is, Lárach Gael and so, speak Irish here. Equally, I've gone there and just had the whole exchange through Irish with a different person, you know? So some people understand and don't speak it back, 
Um, but the main thing really is being able to identify the people who do. And that's that's the challenge, you know. Mm. So if you go to John Benny's on Strand Street, John Benny speaks Irish. If you go to Flaherty's, Flaherty speaks Irish. If you go to on Cafe Literature, Shorsha Olusa speaks Irish. But they may not be there on a given day. And there's an issue in Andangan and the general West Kirkukina where there is nowhere for the service staff to stay in the summertime. And people are commuting from Tralee to go to work in Dingle mm. for the day and back again. And um, most of them don't speak Irish. They're not from the area. And um, so that's a difficulty. Murphy's ice cream, that's another one where you'll get people who speak Irish. <laughs> <laughs> not wanting to make any promises, but but you know, it's a, it certainly is an issue to to identify. And if you go west again, it's like English is the language of commerce, you know, and it has been for a long time. So mm. even in the belt of you'll have businesses like um, guest houses and pubs and shops that are run by people who are enterprising and they don't feel that it's their obligation to provide a, a service through Irish. So it may be kind of half and half, really, hit and miss there as well. And again, the same issues apply with getting staff as well and um, having people who speak through Irish is not top of the list, let's say, for most people. They're just trying to, to get things done. Yeah. yeah. So is it, this is it. I, so I wonder, to put, uh, maybe the underlying question here is like, should I try to speak Irish um, as a tourist in Ireland? And I think your original answer there, Ben, was like, do. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. My approach, maybe it's a personality thing, but uh, to try to do it without adding pressure to the situation. So uh, what I would suggest is try a phrase or two. Like, um, for me, the the least pressure phrase you can use in a shop is when you're leaving, you say slan, and they might mm-hmm. say slan back to you. I, I hear it quite often, people on the phone, they're speaking in English, but they'll say slan to their friends. Um, or, yeah, so you might get a reply, or you might not, um, but they will understand, I think. Good chances they'll mm-hmm. understand. Mm-hmm. And maybe slightly more pressure phrase, uh, you can say, Gurumahagat. Thank you, Gurumahagat. And again, there's no pressure on the other person to reply back to you. So, yeah, why not use um, your, your Irish there? I suppose I'm focusing in on the shop situation or the pub. Um, but the question was more general, wasn't it? And um, mm-hmm. I suppose then the question is, yeah, um, how do you find the Irish speakers? Mm. Well, that's a whole other issue because that's that we're getting on to then um, approaching that's talking to strangers, let's say, which uh, can be complicated <laughs> enough, regardless of the language, whether they speak the same languages <laughs> as you or not. Um, but yeah. uh, like it, it's kind of it's a sad thing to to say or to admit. But Irish people can be quite funny about the Irish language, and just because they can speak it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll want to. Like you know, like when I lived in Clare, there was a man who ran one of the local shops, and a friend of mine, a retired teacher who I spoke Irish to, said, "You know, he speaks good Irish. Speak Irish to him. He speaks good Irish." But when I went into him, he wasn't really that keen when I spoke to him in Irish. You know. Okay. He maybe he do it for the that exchange kind of reluctantly, and then the next time it'd be like, and it never happened, <laughs> you know. And um, so yeah. I don't know why that was, you know. So in the end, you just kind of stop because you feel like you're pushing it on somebody. But then in another context, he did speak Irish to somebody else, so it's hard to know like um, mm-hmm. how people are going to going to react. Okay. So anyway, um, Carol has a second question there. Um, Grimagath, Carol, thanks for your question. Uh, she says, can you suggest a place in Dublin and or Galway uh, where beginners would well, be welcome to drop in and speak a little Irish? So we already had um, Club Oris and the Gael, um in Galway. And as I was saying, 
pubs where there's traditional Irish music, you'll generally find people who have a bit of Irish as well. So that's Galway. And then in Dublin, again, in terms of being sure that somebody will speak to you and you'll find somebody, again, Club Hunra Nagaige. Uh, um, Club Hunra Nagaige, okay. Um, so this is Cunra um, Nagaige, um, by all clear. And that's their email address there. And again, they have classes and courses and activities each week uh, for different levels. So that's what I would recommend there. And, and of course, there's on pop up Gaeltach. This is um, just where, through social media, um, Irish language speakers arrange to meet up in a particular place at a particular time and um, to have fun. That seems to. Um, it's not organized by the people who set it up anymore, let's say. So anybody is free to um, to hold a pop-up event. And the best place to find those is on peg.ie um, rather than their old Facebook page because it's gone kind of, it's open now. So they do happen uh, around the country and they happen abroad as well from time yeah. to time. So it's worth that. Uh, yeah, I, look. I would throw it in if you can find a pop up grid. That's what a fantastic way to connect with people because people are there out of interest. They've made, they've gone to the bother of going to the pop up grid. I've mm. had great chats with people I've never met before at a couple of pop up grid. Um, so, yeah, really good suggestion. Great stuff. So, now you're a Claire man, Owen. We have a question here. And that relates yeah. to Claire from Moira. Moira says, where are the best places in Ireland to practice couple focal, especially in Clare and Mayo? So, Nagaeltachti, I suppose, the yeah. initially would be the best places, but... Uh, and Dublin. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Belfast, Belfast. But, okay, mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. stay within Clare... Um, I suppose there's a difference, isn't there, between Clare and Mayo in that Clare doesn't have an active Gwildacht. Um Now, it used to, and we're talking decades ago, or maybe the remnants of it the last couple of decades, um, but there is no official Gwildacht in Clare. And the language of, as you said, Ben, commerce and communication in Clare is essentially English. Uh, having said that, like, as I was saying about Galway City, um, in places in Clare, and depending what town you're in as well, I think, I, the Irish language is quite strong. Now, I'll compare again Limerick City to Ennis, where I grew up. Um, I, I tend to have a feeling that there's more Irish language ability and signage around Ennis. That's the main town in County Clare compared to Limerick. Uh, so um, just that's a, a plus when you're visiting Clare. And the culture is strong in Clare. The, the musical culture is very strong in County Clare, mm -hmm. the traditional music. So a great place to visit. Um, mm -hmm. But what I've read too, really, um, it's not something I've directly experienced, but around the areas of like Doolin and up along the coast in County Clare um, would be good places to try to find, you know, locals who've got good, strong Irish. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't have any specific suggestions of businesses, say, in Clare to visit, but um, it's a good place to, to try. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ben, I think you have a suggestion, but um, for Mayo, I would say, look, um, there's a couple of uh, official Gwentacht areas in Mayo. I'm not personally very familiar with Mayo. I haven't spent much time there, only really passing through. So I won't talk from experience, but uh, parts of Achill Island and then the top northwest of Mayo um, corner in the Atlantic uh, pointing out into the Atlantic and would be a uh, Gwentic region. So, you know, uh, go and seek it out for sure and use it. And um, so broadcast that you've got some bits of Irish. 
Uh, so that's what I'd say. And um, Ben, I don't know, have you any more specific advice to offer here? Uh, I do a bit. Um, I had a business, a little business at one stage, selling Irish language Christmas cards. And in doing that, I did a sort of a survey, an unofficial survey of um, Irish speaking populations of Munster, let's say, because I was driving around to different places with my samples, going to different shops and saying, and in doing that, you get a good picture of how much they're ir Irish there is in different places um, because they're oh, not yeah. going to buy them. And they'll say on this, this and, you know, um, you get a sense of things. And there is a fair bit of Irish in Ennis. And anyway, through doing that, I came across, I was invited to bring my my wares to a Kirkle Kind to, um, which was taking place in Glore at the time, the Art Centre in um in Ennis. So it moves around uh, it's still going on and they're a very nice bunch of people um, mm. nice Irish there. Cool. So Kirkle kind to um, various different places. So it looks there like it's happening three, four times a week in different venues just in Ennis town. And it's if you go to the website there on Cloros Gaelica, um, it's taking place in places like Kill the Boy and Ennis Diamond as well, if you have a look around. So that's that's worth checking Great. out. And then in terms of businesses, off the top of my head, uh, I don't know loads or again where you could be sure, but certainly the Cheese Press in Ennis Diamond is a lovely cafe run by Sinead Nigarvi. And Sinead sometimes teaches Irish and she's always more than happy uh, to speak Irish. Um, to you if she knows you speak irish she wouldn't have it any other way she's really into languages in general like she speaks a plethora of them so yeah if you go in there she'd be happy <laughs> to talk to you tell her that ben sent you okay grand and then in terms of we just had a message in here on the chat from s brana or branach about belfast so um they say in if in belfast wonderful madden's pub lots of irish uh, actually mostly Irish spoken like the other places that's an interesting thing about Belfast it's very easy to find Irish language speakers in um, mm. particular a part of Belfast yeah which is nice it's like a kind of semi Gaeltacht urban Gaeltacht yeah so that's nice and they're very enthusiastic and happy mm. to speak it as well lovely so move on Owen to Kesht O Patricia from August Patricia um let's see now yes so patricia i would like to do an immersion course um irish course in a gael and visit places in ireland transport is always an issue unless you rent a car um so which immersive experience is most convenient to attend so i was thinking about this <laughs> patricia and it's kind of a difficult one because by their nature and uh, the gael or the irish speaking areas are kind of peripheral they're out of the way there's a reason why they are so getting there is the first thing and then having transport when you're actually there so i think getting there is a given you, you find a way to get there but in terms of having mobility when you are there um, and not being biased but i would recommend the Gaeltacht in west kerry kirk arena um, because it has an excellent local link and um, bus service and the reason why it's so good is that it's peninsula so the bus goes in a circular fashion around the west end of the peninsula. So you really can get anywhere you want and back again conveniently and inexpensively, um, you know, over the course of half a day um, and spend a few hours wherever it is you want to be and go back. So that's where Ira Kirkugina have their courses. Now, I don't know if there are really any truly immersive courses for adults. Um, the closest thing you get to it, I think, is classroom-based courses that have kind of outside the classroom, they have a cultural aspect to them. So that's what Irish Kirkland have. You can choose, you know, an uh, Irish language course that focuses on the singing of West Kerry or on dancing or on archaeology or whatever it is. So while in the classroom, you'll be doing the, the business of learning Irish, but then outside of that, you'll be doing the activity and it may be water sports or whatever um, and you'll be doing that Oscar as well so that fills most of the day and um, while it isn't entirely immersive let's say 
and they also have a little list of low steam or accommodation where you can stay and where um, your guests or your hosts um, will speak Irish. So I would recommend that. Um, I think, you know, looking at any of the other Gaeltachts, you're still looking at getting to the West and the Northwest. Um, and I have limited experience of how um, the, the public transport works in those places. So that's what I would recommend. So I just have some um, some links there for you, Patricia. So Ayrthur Kuvina, that's their website there. And then if you want to have a look at the local link bus service, um, that's it there. You can find different timetables and that. But yeah, it really is, it's a gift. It's really a gift to the area um, because young people and old people can get around and get to where they need to go to. And some, like I know one old woman who just got rid of her car, she didn't need it anymore. She gave it to her son and she just uses the local link. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Um, and you. Yeah, the local <laughs> link is um, a good, strong service. Like I've heard about it. Um, there's a stretch between villages in County Limerick. Mm -hmm. And um, where people had been, you know, driving to pubs, um, the the local link is the social connection now between those villages. So it's really interesting that those local bus services are getting stronger. And as far as I can tell, they're, you know, operated by local people as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd have yeah. to mention... It is Squail as well, sorry, Ben, in mm -hmm. Donegal, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, I've no idea about the transport to the Squail mm -hmm. um, without a car. So you might mm -hmm. have to get a little bit creative and try to speak with the organizers and see if you can catch a lift or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you might have to do that um, on IRIF or indeed seek something out in one of the major towns or cities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And interesting with the local link, that's not a bad way to find Irish speakers as well, because you sit in the bus, you will hear people yeah. um, speaking in Irish. In my experience, I've heard teenagers speaking in Irish on the bus on their own, on a company, yeah. and I've heard the old ladies speaking in Irish as well. Um, yeah. So that's that's another way to find them. How how you approach them then? <laughs> you have to use your own shift and your own your own techniques. But uh, yeah, you will hear people on the bus from Dunreen to from Dangan speaking Irish. Absolutely. Great. So um, question here from Lars, and my heart goes out to Lars because there was a very nice spell of weather in Ireland in May and start of June, but. It's been pretty bad now the last while. Um, it's been raining all day, every day <laughs> for a while. So Lars says, I'm going to Bell Mullet in the Gaeltacht for 12 days and there's heavy rainfall predicted. Uh, what can I do there instead of hiking? I want to learn Irish. So that is a difficult one, Lars, because there isn't loads to do now um, out that way um, other than outdoor pursuits. Um, other than, I mean, anything you might do indoors anywhere else, let's say, not things that are specific to the area. But I got on the phone this morning and I rang a fella called Declan in this place, uh, Tun Nua Surf School, which is just down at the end of Ackle Island. And they do surf lessons, Oscaiga, if you'd like to try that. I mean, if it's raining, you know, get into the sea. You don't have to be worried about getting any wetter. Um, so you could give that a shot. If you want to try so that's just about 15 kilometers from uh, Bale of Weird or Bell Mullet there uh, Lars and the other thing you could try I suppose is um where you might find Irish speakers um is the local GAA club as well um I don't know if they have a whole lot going on at this time of year but if you want to get in touch with them and see if they have any games going on there'll be a bit of shelter and if anybody does speak Irish then you'll hear them speaking Irish at that, or cursing in Irish um, at that, shouting encouragement. And so you can give that a shot. Um, I don't know, Lars, if you're intending to um, um, sign up for any courses or anything like that uh, while you're there. 
Um, but um, you could give that a shot anyway. Get in touch with them. Any ideas there, Owen? Well, um, it looks like there's um, a comment there. Um, but you, heavy rain, it might not be heavy rain all day. If there might be a couple of hours where it's not heavy rain, so you might still get to go on your hike, <laughs> or it might be just like a bit drizzly, and you know you will be wet from the rain, but you'll dry off because it's summer. So <laughs> there's you know there's levels of heavy rain. Owen sounds like he's talking to his kids there. <laughs> <Rather than Lars. laughs> you'll be grand. Just go out in the rain. It's only rain. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there is a comment there. Uh, uh, so from Yehan, Gromagat Yehan. So Yehan says, Wednesday evening, there's an open mic at the local theatre in Belmullet. And so I don't know if that's performance theatre or just song or music or what, but yeah, sounds good. Gromagat Yehan, great stuff. Cool. Grant, so moving on. Um, so best look, Lars, August Gormagathas the Hest. Um T. Yeah, this is a funny one. Let me just do this one quickly. T T says, I wish I'd seen more before my visit, my Ireland visit. Oh well. Um in Gaeltucht, but so much English did okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that's true. But what is cop on? says T. What's cop on? I never knew that one. So cop on can be used in two ways. We want to get technical with the the grammar, the grammar, it's used in the imperative or the ordering mood, and it's to tell somebody to stop behaving stupidly. You might say it to your kids. You might say, cop on, stop annoying your sister. Um, when I was in school, the classic line, and this was only the teachers, would say, cop on to yourself, boy, or I'll beat the lard out of you. <laughs> so cop on to yourself, or, is another thing you'll hear. And then the second way, really, that it's used is when something dawns on you, a realization of something. So he drove for a mile, say, before he copped on to the fact that he had a flat tire. Um, and it strikes me that in this context, it's very similar to cotton on that you'll hear um, in English. So that's cop on tea, Gurmagat. Anything to add to that, Owen, before we move on? Uh, well, <laughs> just for context, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I I think it, it would be good to, to clarify that we are talking about English Irish, aren't oh, we? Yes. So mm -hmm. it is an English language phrase. Um just in case people are watching and wondering, do I say Papa in Australia? <laughs> well, I'm sure they do in Kunamara. Mm -hmm. Um but I also use it um while I'm speaking Irish. Um I'm thinking back, I've used it in the past week. So there you go. Uh -huh. Be a cop on a gut. Is it? Oh, it's not even that fancy, yeah, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is Hiberno English or whatever in the first sense. In the second one, I wonder yeah. if it's just a cotton on. They call mm. Cop on. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Um, Anesthesia was in touch and she was asking about um how do you say lord have mercy in irish and is there an old irish variation i don't know an old irish variation but how it is said and the context that you're asking is a hearna den chokre a hearna den chokre and you'll hear that in that hymn that song a hearna den chokre so that's that um Anesthesia, Gurmagat. And this one, I'll give you this one, Owen. Um, oh. I know you've done a lot of, uh -oh. you've given all, all of this sort of thing a fair bit of consideration, I think, um, in terms of bite size and the different types of people who have an interest in Irish. So this is a very long question. This is a three or four part question. We'll start with the first part, Owen. Uh, Kristen says, D.E. for Margaret Kristen, um, I was wondering if there is a specific name for a Gael Gore in the diaspora. Um, for example, are there different names for, one, a person born in Ireland who grew up speaking Irish, two, a 
person born in Ireland who is actively learning Irish outside of school. Three, a person who now lives in the diaspora and four, a person who was born outside of Ireland who's becoming an Irish speaker like me. So over to you all. Well, to give the direct answer, like, no, I'm not familiar of any with any phrase that would distinguish these different groups of people. But I do think it's it's a great question, Kristen, and thanks. And I appreciate that there's a different context um, depending on your own background. So if you've, um, like the beginner, intermediate, advanced classification that I mentioned before, you might have somebody and they call themselves beginner. Um, they've grown up in Ireland and they've come back to the Irish language as an adult. And rightfully, they'll call themselves a beginner. Now, uh, Kristen, I think you say you're, you've grown up outside of Ireland and you're an Irish language learner as an adult. And let's just say you called yourself a beginner and maybe rightfully so. Your level of Irish and your context, um, your background knowledge of the language itself and maybe the culture a bit around it is very different and naturally so to somebody who grew up in Ireland. So what I found historically maybe is um, the Irish language learning material um, that we had in Ireland was assuming that the person had Irish at school um it's just it brings you up to a certain level where especially pronunciation then really jumps out as a topic that for people who have not learned irish at school and are coming to the irish language to learn later as an adult it's something that we take for granted like and a person who grew up in ireland sees geoguets they can read it and they'll say, oh yeah, geoguet or geodet or however they might pronounce it, but then they have a good sense of how to say it. But you might see a new word or a new phrase and have absolutely no idea of how you should be pronouncing those letters, those combinations. So there's like this implicit knowledge that we get uh, learning Irish at school, even for somebody who feels like they didn't learn much Irish at school and they wish that they learned more Irish at school. So all I'd say, um, apart from that, is I have a huge respect for each of the groups. I mean, for somebody who's grown up in Ireland, feel like they lost that connection with the Irish language and they're, they've made, they're making the effort so strong is to come back to the language and learn it. That's um, real life energy that you're pouring into um, improving your knowledge of the language and culture. And the same for somebody outside of Ireland who decided to learn the language or an immigrant, somebody uh, who, sorry, emigrated um, from Ireland. And because they live abroad after a few years, they might feel that longing to um, find what's special about their own background again. And again, uh, another category that Kristen mentioned, I think, people who've moved into Ireland and now that they want to speak the Irish language more, we we get that at Bites as Irish. So my immense respect to each people, to each group, uh, to people in each group, um, that you're following your curiosity, you're taking on something that's really challenging, like it's difficult. Um, but it's definitely worthwhile. You're not wasting your time doing it. So to go back to the original question, no, we don't really have um, a good label for these categories. Um, so Ben, I wonder what you think, but there are differences for sure in the background and the context of people who fall into these different categories. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's a simple fact that we don't have different terms for all of these different categories. Um, the term Gael Gore itself is something that I've always been a little bit unsure about in terms of what it actually means anyway, you know. 
Um, I suppose I, it's not something I heard growing up. Um, it's something that I heard mainly from non-Irish speakers, referring to Irish speakers of different types. And for me, the way I understood it and the way I still feel about it, like if you look in the dictionary and um, folklore and Tonglen, Irish English, Gaelgor, Irish speaker, meaning number one, meaning number two, learner of Irish. And for me, when I heard it used by English speakers, primarily from outside the Gaeltacht, I understood it as somebody who was enthusiastic about the Irish language, that it was that it was a choice that you had made or an interest that you're following. Um, and I don't think that you can apply that to somebody who grows up in the Gaeltacht with the reality that the Irish is just there and you learn it as you grow up. It's not a decision that you make. It's not some sort of cultural badge or whatever. It's just the reality of the place where you live. So um, that term Gaelgor, um, I find it hard to know what to do with it really. Do you know? And if somebody says to me, you're a Gaelgor, aren't you? It's it's as though I've made some sort of decision to take this path and that's not really the way it is, do you know? And for some people, yeah, I there's suppose a bit of a sort of... I... I'm sorry, Ben, with the lag, but um, mm -hmm. I think I definitely heard it more uh, in my context growing up. It was a phrase, you know, in Ennis, and it's not a Gwiltic area. I did go to Gwilt School, so... To, I was attending school through the Irish language, um, but I have a feeling that the the phrase was used quite a bit. But I definitely agree with that. Um, that it's the people who don't speak Irish so much would maybe label you as a Gaelgore, saying, "Oh, you're the person who speaks Irish. You're the Gaelgore," so mm -hmm. kind of putting you in a box almost. Um, mm -hmm. But look labels in that way are maybe a bit natural too because for me as a as a quail goer for them it, it jumped out because i was speaking irish and they weren't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah so um but anyway certainly in the context of kristen's question uh no we just have various different varieties of learners and people with an interest i suppose and <laughs> who knows whether we should call them Gael Corey or not, I suppose, is the way I feel about it. Um, yeah. So um, we have a couple of questions here. There's one here that came in in the comments you were talking about pronunciation. And this is not something that I know anything about at all, Owen. I'm not familiar with it, but just on the off chance that you are, put it up there. Um, Shukre, how accurate, or how accurate do you find on Linshuk's videos to... B, um, videos about original Irish pronunciations. Is ring a bell? I don't know. I'm not familiar oh. with them. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. That's grand. So, um, in the absence of any more questions about um, this topic, there are just a couple that came in during the week as well that were more general. And these are things that are of interest to people. And they're kind of um, evergreen questions, let's say. So, um, Norma says, um, what's the best book for learning Irish grammar? And um, in my opinion, now this will depend on whether you speak a bit of Irish already or not. Um, if you do, if you have a bit of Irish, but you need to um, study the grammar, um, ask Gaelge, then I would recommend Grammar Gonstro by Eamon O'Donnell. It's a very clear and comprehensive book, and very user friendly, and it has exercises as well to help you to practice what you're learning. Um, then, if you don't have enough Irish to use a grammar book that's in Irish, then um, there are two. And the first one is by the same man again, Eamon O'Donnell, and it's called Teach Yourself Irish Grammar. And then the second is Basic Irish by Nancy Stenson. So they're both good books if you're approaching it through 
medium of English rather than Irish. Okay, um, anything to add to that, Owen, or do you concur? No, um, I don't. Grand. Um, so then Jen and Emily both uh, separately sent in essentially the same question, which is what is the difference between Bovalum and is malum? So Gurmaga, Jen and Emily. So simply um, Bovalum is the conditional mood. It means I would like. So you might say, um, oh, maybe we'll take is malum first. So after that. So is malum is the simple statement I like. So bovalum, I would like. Is malum, I like or I do like. Um, so you could use that to say is malum prati, I like potatoes. But if you wanted to say I would like potatoes, you would use bova. You would say bovalum prati. So I hope that that helps to clear that up for you, Jen and Emily, or Mahagav. Oh, and of course, we did a cheat sheet on the conditional mood recently as well. So you'll find that and a lot more um, useful information in the cheat sheet. Um, all our cheat sheets are free to download and entirely shareable as well. So if you like it, you can send it to your friend um, do whatever you like with it it's uh, totally free to use and share so we have a variety of them on the bite size irish blog there but that's just the uh, the link to the one on the conditional mood which is on mo kinealach but it's worth signing up to our newsletter and um, just to get updates on free shareable um, learning resources like that that we produce on a fairly regular basis at this stage now yeah Anabas, so Gurmaga, Jen, Agus, Emily. Um, yeah, and then JW, getting back to the issue of immersive courses um, and mm. the logistics of getting to them. Uh, JW Mulligan says, as I recall, the university in Donegal runs a one and two week summer program in language and culture you fly into dublin and they provide transport to the school okay you live with a local family that's interesting uh jw and then uh, excuse our ignorance but um s brana was saying it is scale and donegal seem to have immersion courses including all ages and um, i don't have any direct knowledge of that myself um are you anything to add to that Owen? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the ages. Um, definitely adult-oriented um, Irish language courses. Um, if it's a question about kids, I don't know. Um, but I'd heartily recommend it as well. Um, I've, you know, had interactions with them and Lee McQuinnigan over the years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, definitely. Uh, their heart is in the right place um, and I've spoken to a lot of Gwilgore learners in, um, uh, <laughs> in who have travelled to Ireland or um, and I met them outside of Ireland for example in the States um, and they had been to Ida Square so yeah. you'll get the type of person who travelled to their um, are traveling for a very specific reason and mm -hmm. um, they're very motivated and probably quite knowledgeable. So great people to interact with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do get in touch with them for sure, but um, definitely I'd recommend the Quail as an immersion mm -hmm. learning uh, place. Yeah, absolutely. And some of our more enthusiastic members at Bite Size who join me on the conversation role play practice call on Tuesdays and um, some of them have been to the scale and some of them have been there more than once and the feedback is entirely positive yeah absolutely especially if you're interested yeah. in the ultra Ulster dialect as, as many people are so yeah absolutely um we're nearing um, the end of our time now we're going to have to wrap things up soon enough um maybe one or two more questions here I have one question here from Elizabeth, who is actually a Bite Size Grow member. Um, so 
she's saying that she's stuck on writing and speaking in the past tense. So look, if I'm trying to speak about family members who have died or our ancestors from Ireland, how would I say that? So uh, there's no easy way to do this. The answer is simply that you need to study or to learn to form verbs in the past tense, I leash or Elizabeth. Um, and you do sometimes join us on the grow calls and one of our scripts, uh, specifically co raw Shea touches on talking about your Irish ancestors. So it'd be good to have a look at that one and I can send you a message the next time that we're doing that one, remind you to join us. But yeah, it's just about getting to grip really with uh, verbs in the past tense, which are, it's not too difficult. It's the regular ones can be a bit tricky, but other than that, it should be grand. Yeah. And then we have just one more question here from Colleen. <laughs> one more question here from Colleen. And Colleen is asking about her name, Colleen. Um, so uh, the name version of Colleen, uh, which is the word for, say, young girl. Um, can you tell me any of the history of how it became a name versus just a word for an unmarried um, young girl? She says, um, did it start out as a name and then become a word in the language or vice versa? Um, do people use the name in Ireland and is spelling it like Colleen acceptable? for a name so i don't know a whole lot about the history of um how that happened but i would speculate um due to the fact that it's not really a name that's used in ireland a whole lot it's more used in places where irish descended communities are like in america and britain and australia sometimes what happens there is uh, a word from a language may become a name um and it's easier for that to happen because the rest of the people in that country don't understand it as a noun. They just understand it as an Irish name. And um, so I think that happens with, I think it's happened with the word Cree for heart, for instance, like we have Korea um, more in America. And now it's kind of returning to Ireland a little bit because Conor McGregor called his daughter Korea. Um, so these words kind of have a basis or these names have a basis in the Irish language, but they don't, as far as I'm aware, have a history as given names or Christian names in Ireland, let's say. Um, so I think if you were to use that, Colleen, with the original spelling, I think it would be unusual. Um, and I think it may cause a bit of confusion, certainly in Ireland, if we're to use that. It re reminds me kind of the scenario with my daughter, because we're in Portugal at the moment, and my daughter's name is Ella. And in Portuguese, Ella means her or she, which means that the word is constantly coming up in conversation, and she's constantly hearing it, and it's not necessarily her that they're speaking about. And then sometimes when she tells people what her name is, there's a misunderstanding. So it wouldn't be as extreme with a word like Colleen, but in the context of Ireland and the Irish language, um, spelling it like that would probably lead to a, a degree of confusion, let's say. Um, do you have any any input on that in terms of the, the name Colleen? Um, it's origin. No, I, I agree. I agree, Ben. Um... I would be slow to use the um, original Irish language spelling of Colleen um, as a name. Um, if I was going to use that name, I would use it in that anglicized version, C-O-L-L-E-E-N, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that um, even in Ireland, if we're introduced to somebody and they're Colleen, um we'll i think assume that anglicized version and um, and sure there might there's um most definitely some colleagues uh in ireland so um it's not a black and white answer to be able to give yeah. uh -huh. um but i historically i would speculate along the same lines as you did then yeah and it strikes me even at this stage that, yeah, you do meet people with that name in Ireland, but they're not really called Colleen, they're called Colleen. 
So it's pronounced with that yeah. kind of flatter um, O sound um, in the name anyway. The English so language Colleen. pronunciation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um Colleen, 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 um, as the guest. Um, sorry that we don't have any more um, than that for you. Um, and then Johan says again, in German, there's the name Frau, And in some areas, it means little woman. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Go and Margot. indeed, so, the, mm -hmm. just to throw, sorry, Ben, just no? the right. little bit um, uh, with Colleen, um, the diminutive is in there. So the I father in at the end of the word, mm -hmm. Colleen, mm -hmm. um, does denote, I suppose, um, the, the small, it's like it's a mm -hmm. girl. Um, yeah. So that's interesting because we see that diminutive um, pattern show up. Um, like when I was small, um, a couple, especially my teacher from on Spitzel from Connemara from Galway, he'd call me Onin. So not just Owen, but Onin, little Owen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to call out that interesting pattern there, Ben, which might be interesting for people diving into learning the Irish language. Absolutely. So the original word would be Kale, C A I L E. And that's where we get the Kaleen from. And then we have Kalach as well, okay. like Hag as well. So, yeah. Anava, Anava. Um, and then we have Garchele as well, which is small Kale. So that's used for. Uh, not really politically correct term in English anymore. It's been somewhat debased, but wench, um, which would be a young woman, not quite a Colleen, but maybe um, a, a woman in her early 20s or thereabouts, Garchle. Um, but it's used for a girl as well. So, yeah. There you go, with the same the same root. Um yeah, Johan is asking there, is Oshin a form like that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> that is a good question about that. Mm. I found it in, yeah. Yeah, you do have Roshin and yeah, Podrigin. It's also used um, for the female version of male names as Garodin for Garod, Podrigin for Podrick, and that sort of thing as well. Grant, I think that brings us to the end of the road for this evening. Um, thanks very much for sending us your questions, folks. I hope that you found tonight's session interesting and again if you're watching back at a later date you can still throw a question into the comments below and we'll get back to you eventually okay so um anything to add on before we go no um well yes um i want <laughs> to thank everyone who's been participating in the chat because we've been having um uh, keeping an eye on the comments coming in and Yehana, sorry uh, with the pronunciation. Um, she clarified, was it like Oanin and Oshin? No, like Oshin is the the base name, I think, Ben. So, and um, Yehana, thanks for the good wishes for Anyarman too. Um, and moreover, um, we really appreciate people connecting with Bite Size Irish and reaching out, asking questions, and being part of this whole thing, and you don't have to be even studying the Irish language to make a real connection with the Irish language. And that's why we did want to uh, run the Q&A on Visiting Ireland and using whatever Irish you might have uh, when you're visiting Ireland to use it. So um, I would encourage you, despite all the nuances, you know, um, around using the Irish language um, when you're in Ireland, by all means, uh, make your best effort and do it with a smile. 
and I'm sure you'll get some smiles back, uh, genuine smiles. So bring your genuine respect for the language with you and that's all you need, Ben. So Grandma, that's Anava, lovely. And if you'd like to sign up to the newsletter there um, for just updates on what we're at, new little courses that we've developed, and again, um, some of the free resources that we publish um, on a fairly regular basis, um, the uh, address is in at the bottom of the screen there. But more generally, a good place to start um, is this address here, where you can just have a look at all the different resources. Um, that we have. You can take a quiz to see where you might like to start. You can download our free ebook, 10 Secrets for Practicing Irish Every Day. And you can have a look as well at the various different um, uh, memberships that we have as well, because there's a lot more uh, to bite size as well. Um, if you get stuck into what we have in terms of um, our online learning platform, um, which is uh, growing day by day. So yeah, Gurmila Mahagiv, I hope that you find something to interest you uh, there and that you enjoyed the session. That's uh, Rash Liv, Gaumisa, I'll be back with you in a month or so's time with a different topic and a different guest. I guess, Gidi Son, Tour Ari Take care of yourselves. Um. Song of Owen.